Hello, hello, my very dear Medigrid Pro users around the world. Hope you're great and hope you keep grinding using your grids out there. I do, and you know what, though my grids are quite complete, there's still room for some improvement. I'm thinking about some new macros that gonna me work in my new Endo 12 even faster and more efficient. And maybe that's a good time to actually talk about Metagrid Pro macros, how to create them, what they can do for you. And they can do pretty much. Let's take a look. You may actually remember from one of the previous episodes that one of my buttons on my left iPad was redundant. I did it twice and I don't need it twice. It was just a mistake. So there's a room for additional macro on my left iPad. But before we do it, I'm going to show you some of the macros I already use with uh, Metagrid Pro and Nuendo, so you're going to grasp the general idea what a macro is, if you don't know, and how to create them and use them in Metagrid Pro. It's not very difficult, I have to tell you. Mm, and let's start with a demo recording I have here on the timeline. I recorded anything using my talkback mic. It sounds like this. Hello. This is some demo example recording to show how I operate with macros and Metagrid Pro in Nuendo 12. Yeah, so first of all, I don't like the tone. I don't like how it sounds. I would have to denoise it, EQ it a bit, make some basic mixing operations. And normally in Nuendo, I show that uh, you already on the way in, in one of the previous episodes. I have to click here, write the name of the plugin and press enter. I don't have to do it while having Metagrid Pro. I have a separate grid set up for my plugins. So restoration is here and voice denoise is here. I click it here where my inserts are and boom, there it is. And really I cannot find more convenient way of operating my plugins when mixing or sound designing and you could say, hi, but how did you do this? How it works? It must be really something very difficult. No, it's not, guys. Actually, it's not. I'm going to show you this macro because every button launching a plugin is actually a simple repetitive macro of the same kind. This macro is here. You can create, of course, a separate Mac and PC macro for, for Metagrid Pro, which is cool. You can repeat this macro uh, when you make a long press of a button. I'm not using this right now. And here is the macro. I press numerical one on my keyboard here. Why I, do I do it? Because this emulates my mouse click. I emulate the mouse click with a small app called simply Mouse Emulator. It's here and it uses numerical one on my keyboard to emulate the left click. For now, left, right, middle, whatever mouse operations are not present in Metagood Pro, but I talked to Przemek and his team and I suggested that would be amazing to have an emulator of mouse clicks inside Metagood Pro. We'll see what happens, guys. And then after pressing my left mouse button with numerical one, I entered the name of the plugin, so like I would do it normally here on the grid, then I press tab and I press down twice. Why is that? I'm going to show you. Numerical one is click RX9 voice denoise, right? But there's VST2 and VST3 version. I always prefer to run VST3. So I press tab to make this sub window active and I press down twice to get to the VST3 version and then I press enter. So what I have to actually do and how it works is that I have to recreate my logical way of doing things on Metagood Pro. It's really the physical equivalent of what I am doing manually, but it's automated for me. And guys, that's it. Some of the plugins don't actually need any tab and uh, arrows, downs or up 
uh, it's just the plugin name and enter like here because I've got only VST3 versions of that plugins and this is how all my plugins behave and guys of course then I'm gonna do some EQing using my Kerhoff, my favorite one for now then I'm gonna probably compress it then I'm gonna limit it maybe etc 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 whatever my chain is it's just all here works like a charm guys that's the first macro, the simplest one I wanted to show you, but I've got more, of course. Mm -hmm. So I've created some slices and now I can place them on my timeline evenly using set space command. Mm, exactly one second break between all of them. And for example, when I work with game audio guys, I also have a cool macro to create markers from everything that I've got here on my timeline. It's here, it's called add cycle simply one, two, three, four, five, six, etc., etc., etc. It's cool in Uendo 12 because I can make it simply by selecting, selecting events and make it just one command, create separate uh, cycle markers for each event. But until Nuendo version 11, it was the only way to do it was exactly with this kind of a macro to speed it up. And I left this macro with me because sometimes I also do things in Nuendo 11. So this is both Nuendo 11 and 12 operation. And it looks like this. Yeah, my chain of commands. I select events on the cursor, first of all. So I'm gonna select the very first event that's on my timeline. Then I make a short pause again. Then I press P, which makes a region on a selected event. And then I insert a cycle marker according to this very selected region of my timeline. And then I press N twice to move to the next event and then I repeat the cycle, I select this thing, I press P, I create a cycle marker, press N and press N and so on and so on and so on. And these are some of my macros I use, but you know what, of course, key commands or app specific commands, it, it's not everything that can be out there in your macro. If you have a need of something else than a keyboard shortcut, an app specific command or or the line of text to written or a pause you can activate actually an application from your mac computer yes you can send cc messages not on and not off messages you can send program change midi steps or uacc so a really complete suite of midi Actions is also available. And then come the integrations, which are Cubase, Ableton Live, Studio One, Logic Pro X, Digital Performer, Reaper, and Dorico. I use Cubase integrated commands for my new endo because around 60% of Cubase app specific resources, they're gonna match new endo and they're gonna work in your window, which is also cool. I don't have to start from uh, scratch, guys. So these were some of my macros and guys, you can make them as complex as you need, as long as you need, as automated as you need, just make them your way. The only thing you have to do is to recreate the way you are performing this action manually to make Metagrid Pro take care of it instead of you. Sometimes you have to use a mouse click. You can simply install mouse emulator. This is for a PC, but there's surely something like this for a Mac computer too. I'm sure of that, more than sure. And guys, now let's create another macro because I'm gonna need this while editing audiobooks, for example, and podcasts. And you know what, for some reason, I haven't got this macro yet, which is not a great news. What I sometimes, no, not sometimes, what I do all the time while editing audiobooks is that when I don't like a pause or a mistake, I cut it, I move it, I cut it, I move it. Yes, and I have to make it all quite manually, quite careful. And like this, like this, like this, like this, guys. And then crossfade. Uh, yeah, press Z by accident. Yeah, so it's kind of time consuming. I would like this to be automated. So the perfect situation is that I simply uh, mark what I want to cut. I make Metagrid Pro cut it for me and I make it 
move all the rest to the cursor and crossfade for me. So, the first thing would be I'll call it delete gap. I'm gonna give it a cool icon. Yeah, maybe this one. I don't have to use any app specific icons. I can use whatever icon I want to use. And guys, here comes my macro. I'm gonna delete this, this and then I'm gonna set the cursor to the start of the event. So that's L simply on my keyboard. L. Good. Then I press delete to actually get rid of I of what I want to get rid of. So delete. And to make everything what's here, let's say it's also recorded like this. So now I want to take it all, make it like this and like this, let's say. So now I have to select everything to the end of the project. Mm. And it's possible to make it happen in New Endo, of course. Select from cursor to end. I'm not sure if it's, that's going to work. So now I have to press Control X, Control V to make it all happen here until this very point. Control X, Control V. And I'm here, and then I have to select the one on the left as well to crossfade it. So shift and cursor left. Shift plus cursor left. Then I press simply X to crossfade my events. Right, I'm here. Then I would simply press shift plus arrow to unmark everything again. And L just to land in the very si same place, just in case of navigation issues. So now, shift plus right and L, L. And also I would uh, change my cursor type again to this one for marking uh, slices of audio in my events. So now the last thing will be pressing 2 to change the cursor type. That's it. That should work. So now whenever I cut anything, the rest should move nicely on timeline automatically. Let's see. Yes, we're done. One more. Boom, boom, boom. Yes. One more. Yeah. Very nice, guys. As you can see, I've created this in a minute. I just have to think what I'm actually doing manually. And Metagrid Pro perfectly made it happen automatically. And well, this is a huge, another huge time saver for me. And you know what? Mm, I still have some room, though you might not see this, but I can still create some sub pages, more detailed grids to include, to include more macros if I feel like I need any guys. So I totally, highly recommend you using Metagrid Pro macros because this is, as for me, the most powerful a feature of this app and this is for me the main and the real reason I'm using it so gladly because it's a huge huge time saver. That's it for today guys. I hope to see you next time very very soon. Take care.